Insects are everywhere. They are beautiful, they are noxious, but they are marvels of evolution. Current estimates of their history, which are always susceptible to revision, place their appearance in the fossil records at 480 million years ago. In that time, they have become the essential threads for the foundation of life. They knit together the fabric of ecology. They fertilize our crops. They feed other organisms that in turn feed other organisms up the chain of life to us. These mostly tiny things are marvels of evolutionary engineering. All of their inner anatomy, their muscles, circulatory systems, and their nervous systems are encased in a hard shell. If not for these physical constraints on such an adaptive strategy, they could have become the dominant life form on Earth. As it is, they are among the most numerous. But suppose they became extinct, perhaps all of them, or perhaps just many of them, what would the world look like? Here are five things to think about as we face the coming insect apocalypse, and what would happen if they all just disappeared. Sit back and enjoy. What's happening? We have probably all heard about the phenomenon amongst honeybees called colony collapse disorder, which first began to attract widespread attention in 2006. This was not a new phenomenon because it had been occasionally noticed in apiculture and first became prominent in 1918 and 1919, but it began to spread rapidly and widely early in the 21st century. It was initially blamed on mites that are peculiar to honeybees or a virus and then also on certain pesticides, called neonicotinoids. In CCD, worker bees suddenly, sometimes overnight, abandon a hive, leaving just the queen and a few caretaker bees for the larvae. And while the losses of honeybee hives have been catastrophic for some beekeepers and various sectors of agriculture, we are now discovering that almost all insects are in fact experiencing dramatic population collapses. The realization that the insect population was also declining was discovered by Soon Boy Rees, a Danish high school science and math teacher, who happened to notice one day, while on a trip with his son, that they had driven for miles without his car windshield becoming covered with smashed insects. And this made him curious, because he could remember when summer trips would require stopping every few miles to wash squished insects off the car, so he decided to look into the matter. Fortunately, he was not alone in noticing this phenomenon, Researchers in the US had already noted that the monarch butterfly population had declined by 90% in just 20 years. Some bumblebee populations, also in the US, had declined by about 87% during that same period. A study by a small German entomological society had concluded in 2016 that insect populations had dropped by 75-82% to 82% in just 27 years. A whole world of insects has been vanishing right under our noses. This is no small matter, it's virtually impossible to determine just how many insects there actually are. Although it's estimated there are 10 quintillion insects on Earth, and this doesn't include other anthropods like spiders, it's estimated that spiders alone consume between 400 million and 800 million metric tons of insects each year, and that's just a small fraction of the total biomass of insects. Everything that lives is linked in the food chain. In a sense, it's very simple. I eat you, and you are eaten by me, or vice versa. This is because all living organisms are simply delivery packages for DNA. DNA is a complex polymer, a long strand of molecules that repeats itself again and again, and it has no purpose other than to make more of itself. This is fundamentally what life is. But this compulsively self-replicating molecule has managed to invert an endless variety of ways in which to make this replication happen. This is why we do not see microbes everywhere, although they are in fact everywhere, but also elephants and whales and tigers and pandas and humans and insects. This is because this web of competing and battling DNA naturally establishes a tentative and precarious balance in which each DNA package finds a role that preserves its own survival. And this is what we call ecology. Perhaps ironically, all of this competing DNA ends up relying on all the other competing DNA for survival, because everything is struggling to compete for survival with everything else, and a very delicate balance is reached. This touches each of us, because insects and other animals are of course part of this complex web of life. 
and one of the many functions they perform is pollination. Estimates vary regarding just how essential insects are to our food supply, but according to Metafact, about 115 food crops are at least somewhat dependent on animal pollination. To be more precise, approximately 78% of food crops in temperature regions and 94% of food crops in tropical regions are dependent on animal pollination, mostly via insects, although not necessarily specifically by bees. Even so, this is more than enough to cause great hardship and famine if insects were to drastically decline in numbers. Waste Management Millions of organisms die every day, and then they rot and are consumed, and in this manner, their basic ingredients are returned to the web of life. Insects, of course, play a significant role in this by feeding directly on dead animal tissue, or laying eggs on this material and speeding up the recycling of these substances. If insects were to disappear, either largely or even entirely, this process of recycling would continue through the actions of bacteria and fungi, but it would be enormously slowed down. Rotting animal matter and the disease risks that this material entails would accumulate rapidly. Excrement is also consumed and recycled by insects, and again, while bacteria and fungi would continue to act to eliminate this waste, it would be a much slower process and present an increasingly health hazard. Furthermore, many animals higher up the food chain, like reptiles, amphibians, and birds, depend heavily on insects for their own food. Animal protein is easily and quickly digested by the living tissues of other animals, and this is why animals eat other animals. Plant matter can be utilized as food, of course, but it can take a long time to process in metabolic terms, partially because of the tough cellulose that acts as its structural material. Also, plant material often lacks some of the essential amino acids that some animals, like humans, can synthesize. Even those bird species that feed largely on seeds as adults are still reliant on animal protein, because animal protein serves as a fuel for rapid growth, which is vital for survival. And of course, some birds remain carnivorous throughout their lives. The disappearance or severe decline of insects would eliminate a vital food source for many other animals and magnify the effects on the ecological web of life as we know it. An increase in pests. A 2015 German study suggested that insect generalists, i.e. those species that can survive in many different environments, increase in numbers while specialists, those species that require a narrower range of specific conditions, tend to decline. For instance, humans as a species are generous par excellence because we are omnivores. We can eat a broad range of things, and we can travel long distances and use our material technology to adapt to a wide range of environments. But so can some insects, like cockroaches. The fact is, the type of insects we generally regard as pests are in fact generalists that can survive and flourish under a variety of environmental conditions. And if most insects disappear as a result of habitat change due to pesticides and farming, the ones that remain will be very tough and spread to fill the adaptive niches that have been left open. Even if we humans survive and adapt to a world that no longer has insect pollinators to maintain our food sources, we may well see a broad expansion in the numbers and types of what we consider to be pests. This will also include non-insect anthropods like ticks and fleas, and also bedbugs. This situation will only get worse. The end of a source of wonder and beauty. There is another thing that we will miss, an intangible thing, but nonetheless real. Humans have a capacity to wonder and find beauty even in nature, a place which really should have room only for survival or death. But even chimpanzees are known to look at the night sky for no apparent reason. What are they thinking in those moments? We don't know, but we can take a moment to think about the importance and beauty of this view of life, and take a step back to see it as other, and perhaps more than just a variety of more and more innovative mechanisms for the delivery of DNA. They are that too, but life has found ways to captivate us with its inventiveness. Somehow, we have become able to see beauty in this, 
and those tiny little mechanisms we call insects, with all their colours and shapes and strange quirks, are among these magnificent beauties of life. Humans seem to need beauty and wonder, including the beauty and wonder in nature. There is a term for this love of nature, biophilia. We will miss all of this, until we perhaps forget as a human civilization that all of this even existed in the first place.